All right, Sagar, what's on your radar? I have a full confession to make. I have been utterly obsessed with the inner details of the Harry, Meghan, royal family drama for years. It's probably <laughs> the least populist thing about me, and I accept that. <laughs> I have been looking for an angle to unload my thoughts on this show to all of you, and luckily, something happened across the pond which provided me an opportunity to actually make a point which I'm qualified to speak on, and which I think undergirds a consistent theme of this show. By now, I'm sure that you all know more details than you ever cared to know about the saga, so I will keep it short at hand. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry sat for a long interview with Oprah. They made a lot of claims about their treatment within the royal family. You can believe them or don't. Whether you do is immaterial, but it certainly has generated a lot of press. Not just here, but abroad in the UK, where political commentator and host of Good Morning Britain, Piers Morgan, has been the leading voice of the skeptics. Full disclosure, I love Piers. I have ever since I saw him on The Celebrity Apprentice. I try to forget that he ever had a CNN show, and in my mind, he's the pugnacious prick on GMB, GMB every day. He was playing his role well in that story, consistently serving as the only voice in the entire UK who thinks, hmm, well, this former princess has an awful lot to gain in money and fame from leveling these charges, and maybe they fit into a broader pattern of career, of doing anything to gain social status. Just his two cents. On his show, after a clip played of Markle claiming that she was suicidal during her time within the royal family, this was Piers' reaction. Let's take a listen. I went to the institution and I said that I needed to go somewhere to get help. I said that I've never felt this way before and I need to go somewhere. And I was told that I couldn't, that it wouldn't be good for the institution. So OK, again, let's have the names. Who did you go to? What did they say to you? I'm sorry, I don't believe a word she says, Meghan Markle. Well, pretty fair question. Nothing really that beyond the pale. That little comment right there revealed the power of our First Amendment and the danger of woke mobs outside of our system of government. Piers' perfectly legitimate comment that he doesn't believe a word Meghan Markle said spawned 41,000 complaints from viewers within the UK to complain to the official media regulatory body called Ofcom. Now, this organized reporting effort alone was enough for the government agency, which stands for the Office of Communications, to step in and launch an official investigation into Morgan's comments. Think about how completely insane that is. Piers Morgan said something people find offensive. They mass report him on social media, and now the government is stepping in to investigate his comments. Not just investigate. The investigation alone appears to have pushed Morgan out the door. Morgan announced hours after the official inquiry that he was leaving, stepping down from the show, which he literally built back into a juggernaut that is because of that investigation. This should chill you on this side of the Atlantic because it's the ideal outcome supported by our mainstream journalists. That something saying something someone disagrees with is enough not just to be forced out of a job, but to prompt the government to come after you and enforce their standard of speech. People who have brain cells and believe in press freedom immediately recognize this. One of them was CNN journalist Jake Tapper, who tweeted, quote, This is what happens when you live in a country where there is no First Amendment. Insanity. I literally can't imagine disagreeing with that. Of course, ITV has the right to fire peers if they so choose. But to be prompted out by a government agency for saying what you want on your TV show? That's crazy. But the really chilling part is what followed. The number of UK journalists who piled on Jake Tapper for making the point. Perfect example from Tom Rennie, a UK radio host, who replied, the press needs regulation by an independent body, otherwise you get the mess that US news has become. Reporters being a blubbering mess on the air, racist diatribes and personality hosts shouldn't be allowed under the guise of news. You need Ofcom. We need a stronger Ofcom. Have you ever heard of a journalist defending not just regulation, but wanting more regulation? Only someone who knows that regulation is ideological enforcement for their point of view would espouse such a ridiculous point. And it's not just this one guy. A huge amount of English journalists jumped on Jake Tapper. One of them was Krishnan Gurumurthy, a big journalist on Channel 4 News in the UK, who said, quote, not insanity, a democratic choice to have broadcast media regulated with a duty to be fair and duly impartial. It stops TV from taking sides to support or oppose things the way that you do in America, and it upholds a code of standards, adding that the alternative is TV news that can mislead, manipulate, and lie without consequence acting as cheerleaders for politicians. Helping grow division and conspiracy theories with the only regulator being the commercial market. 
To many Brits, that's dangerous and undesirable. Yeah, I'll take my constitutionally enshrined right to say whatever the hell I want any day of the week here. If the Hill has a problem with that, they can fire me. But the one thing the government can't do is they can go F themselves to whatever I say. Embedded within their freakout is this. It is possible and desirable to have the government decide what is true and what is not and enforce those standards on an industry whose very job it is to inform the public. I think it's a chilling thing that we should look at. We should appreciate our First Amendment rights. And you can find what Piers Morgan said to be offensive. That's fine. But to have a unified mob force him out of a job and prompt re government regulators to come in and essentially serve as the shield for that, I think it's completely crazy and more people should speak out against it. Um, cards on the table. Yeah. I do not like Piers Morgan and I Love do Piers. not give a shit about the royal family <laughs> whatsoever. And I sort of hate you right Love now for both. making me engage in it at all. It's okay. However, However, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking while you were talking about, mm. remember during the Democratic primary campaign when Elizabeth Warren proposed like a censorship bureau? Yeah, this is what it looks like. This is like, yeah. so um, uh, my initial react was like, okay, we've got enough to work with here to deal mm. with here. And I'm kind of sympathetic to the UK journalists who piled on Jake Tapper only because um, CNN and others don't engage in any self-reflection about their own culpability 100%. and all of that. So right. I do see like a level of hypocrisy there of like, you know, worry about your own network, yes. worry about your own business here, and mm -hmm. we'll deal with our with our crap over here. But I think the reason why it is relevant is because you have mainstream people who build themselves as progressives like Elizabeth Warren. Mm -hmm. This is what they want. Floating yeah. a very similar outcome. Yeah. This is what they want. I mean, you had those members of Congress writing a letter and you said in your piece, like, yeah. have you ever heard of journalists calling for more censorship? Yeah, actually, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> it happens all the time here. I yes. mean, look at what happened in the New York Times where there's like all of these staff, the, the union and the staff getting involved to try to enforce increasing levels of censorship. You know, Kamala Harris and other people during the Democratic primary pushing the tech companies for more censorship yes. um, rather than, you know, really getting to sort of the roots of the problem with the antitrust issues and the power issues and lack of competition there. So in that way, I will grant you that it's that, you know, in that way, I can be made to care about it, I well, guess but, is what I'm saying. Well, that's what I mean, though, which is that I did not. Jake is the only person in the American press who saw speak out against this. And you look and most people dissident right, you know, also. But that's not enough because you see the crushing pressure from the Taylor Lorenzes of the world and others in order to use the government as an instrument of censorship. And this is the clearest example, which is that even if you have a supposedly independent body like off which is what it is, created by their parliament, it can be gamed with our current social... On Twitter, it all happened right here. Our technology used in order to manipulate their government system to try and force Piers Morgan off the air. What he said, okay, that's up to ITV. If ITV wants to fire him, that's fine. But it has the government should have no place whatsoever in investigating any of his editorial comments. If he says something which is completely wrong, and then even then, as long as they correct it, like we do here in the US, if you issue a correction and you don't leave yourself up to legal liability, that is what the system looks like. You can hate it, you can not like it, but I think that's a better that's better. And our system is just empirically allows for actual dissonant voices. And I was thinking about it. When is the last time you saw some real investigative journalism come out of the UK? This is why. How are you supposed to do Watergate? How are you supposed to do any real investigation of the British government and their role? They can even tell them what to, when to publish, what not, and put hard stops on their stories. Yeah. That's crazy. And I, you know, Glenn Greenwald is somebody obviously who has talked about this and too, and his experience with the British press, because he was at the Guard Mm -hmm. And I remember watching that documentary of him uh, when Edward Snowden, I forget what it's called, I think Citizen Four, where the British side of the Guardian had to like figure out, is GCHQ going to allow us to publish this, which is their, you know, NSA? Like, are they going to come barreling through the door into the office of the Guardian? Yeah. They could do that there. We can't allow this type of stuff to happen. And this isn't just to crap on the UK. This is to say, our journalists, our press corps, they want this system. They want to be able to take us off the air whenever we say mean things about them and have organized campaigns against us or Tucker and Taylor Carls, uh, Taylor, Taylor Renz, which is happening right now. Yeah. They would happily use that to say this is unfair. We can't allow that. It's a complete affront to the First Amendment. Agreed. Here we go. Next on Rising, Emily Chashinsky and Andrew Feldman are going to join us for the panel. That's when Rising returns.